Hey, so we just streamed like 20 minutes of a show. The best 20 minutes ever. It was pretty great, actually. It was also to the test channel and not to the live channel. That's not you. It's the opposite of you guys. Yeah. So. So we're back. Hey, how's it going? We got a bunch of great news this week <laughs> that we definitely haven't talked about before ar already in, in a different previous version of the show. That's Here's something I've never on. read before. NCI NCIX <laughs> had a data breach. Some of the people that we actually know in our lives are really affected by this. Yeah, like lots wow. of people actually. Even people that work here. Also, Amazon has new hardware, including like a microwave and a subwoofer and some weird, weird stuff. And guess what, China? Google's back, and they want you to search for stuff using their service. But this time, they're ready to play by the government's rules. What will that mean? News at 11. <laughs> also, Vulkan 1.1.85 is releasing with ray tracing and video extensions, which is good, even if you don't like ray tracing, because that means that maybe there will be more Vulkan in the world, which is good for you and your friends. Live long and roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you have the Twitch shadow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Squares Who is it? Sinner. Squarespace. Squarespace. Madrina. Madrina's. Synergy. Synergy. Do it in reverse order from last time. <laughs> so we've we've done this before. We've, we've done this already. This is Groundhog okay. Day. Oh, awesome. So starting from the top, again, we've got the NCX data breach. Uh, I think this is pretty important to talk about, so we're just going to do the whole thing over again. This was originally posted by privacyfly.com. It's like the, I think it's the only article on their site, but I could be totally wrong. Um, but you'll see it in the description if you want to check it out if you're watching the VOD. And it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite the adventure. We're going to skim over a lot of it, but if you're even remotely interested, I would recommend checking out the original article and reading it. Yeah, even if you're not, if it's the f if it would be the first leak or security thing uh, for which you actually read the detailed description. Yeah, it's a treat. This would be the first one to do it with. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's like it's like a story. It's gripping. It is. Yeah, it's it, it gets really deep into it. As you can see, it's like really written out. What happened here? Is it all starts on Craigslist, naturally. Yeah, Travis Doring, hope I'm saying your last name correctly, sees two database servers from NCIX for sale on Craigslist, asks the guy if it still has the original data on it. Guy takes forever to respond, but does eventually respond with, yes, original data is intact, and it just goes from there. It's a pretty wild ride. Oh, the weird show's on. Hey, yeah. I just heard Luke talking, and I was like, Luke's here. Yeah, we were streaming to the test channel. Oh. Yeah, that sucked. For like a long time. Oh. There's apparently new instructions on how to run the WAN show, and the instructions were behind everything. So wasn't. Oh, are you guys actually streaming them. now? We are yes. actually streaming now. Oh. Yes. I'm glad I'm interrupting the show. Hi, Nick, everyone. Nick is saying hi. Nick is here, and he's happy that Luke's here. You guys are on both YouTube and Twitch? Yeah. Sweet. Anyways, um, there was a lot of information in this leak. This is not a standard leak. Usually, when you hear, like, oh, website information leaked, there will be a set amount of user accounts or all user accounts. It's usually just the username and password that gets leaked, which is really bad, to be clear. But this is like many, many, many levels beyond that. <laughs> this was all your credit card information, all your payment information in general. So if you played with uh, PayPal or something else, uh, addresses, full names, passwords, all of it unencrypted, all of it in plain text. Were there some um, social insurance numbers? For employees, yes. Uh, for employees, there were social insurance numbers, T4s. Oh, that's right, yeah. Address data, like historically over time. All the employment information, which is usually pretty heavy in terms of like, I'm going to steal your life, bro. Uh, all of that was uh, was available. Oh, God. So pretty, pretty oof. So um, the, the story there was that there was a warehouse that NCX had other junk in, and but they didn't own the warehouse. There were tenants there. So when they yeah. went bankrupt, their, their rent was overdue to the tune of $150,000. So in order to try to pay Make for it they bad. just said just keep all the junk that we have in there so then the landlord has all these servers and desktops like hundreds of desktops computers and he's trying to sell them so then this uh this third party this company comes in and says well that stuff's useful to us because of this project we're working on 
So there's this guy named Jeff that works for that company. Jeff, that's all we really know. And my name is Jeff, and he's brokering <laughs> the deal. So he he brokers the deal and gets this company what they want. But then he doesn't he doesn't stop there. One more thing, I'm gonna sell this data uh. multiple times to multiple different people. Some of these people are come from overseas. There's one uh, individual who was supposed to come in December uh, to pick up some of the hardware. The guy was from China. Like this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. There was actually a tweet that just happened uh, earlier today from the RCMP. Right. Which is the police in Canada. And they said that they seized the hardware now. Really? But, yeah. That was pretty fast. Not fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been yeah. sold like seven times for like 35 grand. Or, it was... Oh, it's gone. It's super gone. I'm just yeah. happy that once this article came out, which was like a day or two ago, they've already got everything. I love how the tweet doesn't specify. It's just like, yeah, there's a company you may have heard of. They're now defunct, but they're pretty well known. <laughs> Uh, I said afternoon we opened an investigation <laughs> into data. Some people listen, so we got to, yeah. Uh, we opened an investigation into data storage devices being sold online, allegedly containing, allegedly, you know, dude. Anyways, uh, containing customer data from a defunct but well-known computer retailer. We have since recovered the storage devices. Our investigation is active and ongoing. So them recovering the storage devices, unfortunately... Well, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm happy they did that. Means effectively nothing uh, because the data has been copied multiple times and resold. There's actually more places to buy it from now. Yes. <laughs> um, and like, even the original guy was like, do you want to buy all the hardware? Because I have the important stuff backed up and I'm reselling it anyways. So you can buy all the hardware. And it was way cheaper to buy just the data it was 15 grand instead of 35. Yeah. So the dude was like, well, no. <laughs> So like yeah, the seizing the hardware like good job guys, and you know the allegedly having customer data. Good job on not being sure yet, but uh, it's just so scary how much different this feels to me. Uh, you read about hacks like this all the time. Equifax was a big one in the states that affected yeah. many many people. Yeah, didn't affect me, so I didn't really care that much. But when the screenshots have towns like Chilliwack, yeah. Coquitlam, Langley, th that are right around us. Suddenly you're looking at you're looking at the at the spreadsheet tracing that line across from the town and finding a name and thinking like oh, I might know the name that's right there. Yeah, so here's here's some uh database snapshots. Yeah. That's of the the top one seems to be of uh, an American database and the second one seems to be of a Canadian database. So, <sighs> if someone bought this data, what could they do with it to screw you? They can do a lot. Um, we're, we're actually getting into a part of this that we didn't get into last time, but they, they could do actually a lot, especially with employees. So I'm going to jump back slightly um, and cover the different levels of data leak that had happened. So for customers, like I had already said, your full name, your address, your payment information, your password, all that kind of stuff, plain text. That's a lot. There's a lot they can do with that already. Now I'm going to jump to other people, however. Um, as you can see up here, someone's t4 leaked uh there there's social security numbers wait is that the right one i always get them confused because i have both social insurance number social insurance is that canadian yeah so um your social insurance number your uh like your residential history because you have to update that with your employer all the time your first name your last name your middle name like everything that an employer would need to legally employ you which is a lot leaked so that's pretty bad so let's go from the customer standpoint first they could uh take credit out on your credit card they could cash out your credit card um they could do those like terrible check things for your credit card. now would your the information that leaked it would have to be of a credit card that's still active yes so i think that that is definitely a subset of the data yeah because uh, to be clear as well this data goes back forever but only as recent as 2017. Well, yeah, because but credit they, cards are they went three under three years. Right? So if your credit card, yes, but you could renew the credit card and keep the number. So you could have the same information. Yeah, like they, I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's one credit card that I have to null now. Dang, which kind of sucks because you like that one. Well, it's just I've just been <laughs> using it for a long time. So there's like some recurring billing on it that I'm going to have to kill and oh, yeah. reset up. It's just annoying. Um, 
but they don't have my more important one. So, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they, they could. Foiled they could, again! <laughs> they could mess with your credit if they already have that. If, uh, if you paid with PayPal, they probably have your account information because your account, most PayPal accounts that I know of are set up based on the email. And you would probably give them the email if you tried to pay through PayPal. Um, if your password if you have that if you share that password elsewhere um, stuffing that's sorry. what it's called right they, they i've been watching that hair in your mouth forever yeah. <laughs> so, i tried to get rid of it like subtly <laughs> so luke's talking and i'm looking at him from the side <laughs> and the way the lighting is i can totally see this long hair i don't even know where it came from me neither uh, it's long. honestly ivan filled this cup and i just took a drink so i'm a little <laughs> there's this little long hair sticking that. out of his mouth and then <laughs> He finishes his sentence, goes, ah, and I can see it shooting. <laughs> <laughs> totally inhaled it. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, sorry. Keep going. I don't know what we were talking about. Uh, uh, we were talking about uh, password. Oh, yeah. Stuffing is when, let's say, LinkedIn gets hacked. They take your password. Well, then you can just take that password and assume that someone uses the password in lots yep. of different sites, and they just brute force it on lots of different sites. So you, you get hacked. Stuff that password and username into everything, essentially. So and just because LinkedIn got hacked doesn't mean it's the only target for you to get pwned. That's why you should have something like a password manager and have unique passwords for every single service and website or whatever that you use. Um, but anyways, so password could be a vector for attack. They also have your, your full name and your address and stuff. So they, there could be some relatively minor-ish, but there definitely could be some uh identity theft going on like there. they send you flowers on valentine's day and just just to screw with your relationship well like if they have your full who are these from <laughs> john <laughs> uh if they have if they have your your full credit card number your full address and your full name it's relatively easy to convince different institutions that you are that person um, it's actually not that hard because of social engineering. There, it's it's surprisingly easy to convince people uh, because most people working for a company don't want to do as much work and it's more work to verify that you're the person that you say you are, especially when you're like, oh, it's I, they ask you what your address is or they ask you uh, certain information about yourself if you have that. And if you have the person's full name, if you have... Uh, their address and you have their credit card number you can probably get a little bit of other information and if you get a little bit of other information and you use the right tone and you assert yourself in the right way you can often get access to mm. additional things now, now it's hopefully you get people who are as judicious as the people i've had in the past where they ask me for my postal code and i go uh i don't know what it is and they're like well sorry and i'm like you realize I can Google it. You can go online and just Canada Post has, has a service where you yeah. just type in an address, any address at all, and it gives you the postal code. I'm like, if I'm trying to pwn James Stribe right now <laughs> and I don't actually have his postal code on hand, like this is It's really easy to find. Social engineering is like a, a big deal. Um, and, and this would give someone an insane amount of ammo for social engineering. Now, beyond that, if you know anyone who worked for NCX, this is where it gets really bad because they have their social insurance, social insurance number. I keep on forgetting sin. which one's which. Um, having their sin is really brutal because basically no one has other people's sin numbers. So in terms of pulling identity theft stuff, they have a major vector to screw with you at this point, um, especially if they have your residential history and your sin because as far as i know those two things combined is like what you need to get your birth certificate reprinted and if they get your birth certificate they can get pretty much any other government id so they can get driver's licenses they can get whatever and at that point you're screwed it's over you're done even if they don't have all of that and all they have is um like uh the name of an institution that you use and your address you all they already are your email address yeah they can already make convincing phishing attacks oh yeah which are enough to pwn most people yeah including politicians yeah it's uh so th this is very bad and 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 i guess the original root question i think was what can you do to protect yourself there's 
It wasn't, but okay. that's next. I thought it was, but sure. Okay, there's not much left, so we'll go there. Um, if, if you're a standard user, let's go back from that. If you just purchase things from NCIX, update your passwords. Make sure there's no other password that's shared this password uh cancel any credit you, card you mean the password that you used at like an ncis, at an NCIS website? website yeah yeah most people as far as i know were online shoppers so uh yeah make make sure that you change your change your other passwords if you had other passwords that shared a password with ncix.com but seriously in this day and age you need to make sure you're not sharing passwords across websites this kind of stuff happens all the time get on top of it it's it's too late at this point figure it out um Outside of that, cancel any credit cards that you may have even possibly used there. As far as I know, you can't like check what one you had. Well, this is my other question is, is there a way to figure out whether or not you were leaked? Right, no. Um, as of right now, no. This privacy fly guy, I don't know if he ended up actually buying the data set or not. It says that they like made an a, agreement to buy it and then he like walked out of the building and then that's the end of the story. Uh, Spoilers, dude. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's, that's a good point. Uh, but <laughs> well, it's an interesting story. I would want to read it. Um, so I, I don't know if he has it. Other people do have it, but it hasn't leaked publicly. Like there isn't any, there isn't a website out there with all of this stuff publicly on it. So there's no way to check specifically if you are in there. But like if you've ever bought something from NCX or if you ever worked with NCX, you're in there. So do you think now that the RCMP have it, that they will maybe re release a list of names of people who got pwned? I wouldn't trust it anyways. If you've ever, it seems like a fairly easy set of like if statements. Have you ever worked there? No. Have you ever bought anything from there ever? Yes. Well. <laughs> I'm like racking my brain. I know. I think I may have bought one from a physical location. I think I may have bought like an HDMI cable once. Mm. But then I kind of think I bought it with a company credit card. Like I was doing it for my other job. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, would, I would be safe at a minimum. If you're an employee, like, yeah. So if you're a customer, change whatever passwords that might be the same. Cancel your old credit card. Get a new credit card and forget about it. You'll be okay for the most part. You might get, you might get like, there might be people trying to do a minor identity theft to you, but that's, that's going to be basically a constant. That's just a thing with the internet these days. And there's probably no information in there that couldn't be found if someone cared enough anyways. Um, so I would be like a little bit, a little bit of heightened awareness over the next little while. If you receive any emails about like your password has been reset on some website or something like, you know have some heightened awareness for a bit but other than that you should be okay if you're an employee i'm not versed enough in this stuff to properly tell you what to do you need to look into it yourself but think certain a couple things that you can do is what obviously change all your credit card stuff because you probably bought stuff from the store um and two i believe in canada you can get your sin changed i'm not sure um i do know you can get a credit freeze which like freezes your credit for about a year I think is the the average time that they do this for um, and it, you would still be able to like if you wanted to go buy a house or a car or something like that and you needed credit you would still be able to go get it but like low-level credit application stuff is going to be frozen for a year um, a sin change is a rough go a sin change is a very rough you're gonna go. be waiting in line in those buildings that you don't like going to yeah, for a long time. And you're going to show up there and finally get to the front line, and they're going to say, oh, you didn't bring the right ID. You're going to have to go back, take more time off work, do it again. But you might want to anyways, to be completely honest. I need to do some more research, but I think they might not have mine because I think I was a contractor. Um, and I think my contracting agreement thing was through like a... F no leaks. It's in the contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like I think it's it's... Like my, my fake little company name thing, which is legal because I didn't make enough money because they underpaid me to an almost criminal level, actually to just, yeah, anyways, that's a different conversation. Um, I, th like that might leak, but it's not even a real company and there's nothing to look up there. Mm. Um, yeah, like I think I'm mostly okay, uh, but like... Riley's dead. He's, he's 
We buried him this morning. He's Riley, actually dead. Linus, Ivan, a few other people that I know are. Linus gonna... already left the country. <laughs> Just <laughs> woof. Uh, there, there's going to be work for them in terms of covering themselves from this. This is this is like really really brutal. Um, it's uh yeah. But with that, let's finally talk about other news. It's keynote season, baby. Yeah. Apple stuff. Amazon stuff. Let's talk about the Google Amazon events stuff. coming up. That's my favorite one. Well, I'm hoping I'm hoping the Pixel Three is sweet because I need a new phone. This is this is my Pixel One XL. Ooh, I want the the Mini Pixel, oh. the non XL. Yeah, I want it. This is an S Nine Plus. It's beautiful, but it's two plus. <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of one handed, and I just want a smaller one. And I want to be able to put my phone in the front pocket of my jeans again. So when a chat said, "Stop giving clues to the hackers." <laughs> They're way ahead of us. <laughs> They're way ahead of us. That's not if, and if those are clues, like, holy crap! What is he talking <laughs> about? The pixel? No, oh, he's got a no, pixel. I think he's talking about. Uh, yeah, the, the people, the names. Dan Sag stuff. Yeah, it's all over. It's known already. They absolutely know. I, can you imagine there's someone watching this stream and be like, "Wait, no a second. way! This Linus leak? worked at NCIX. Hold my beer. <laughs> what? <laughs> my God." Or like what they could do with the data. Dude, if they're going to spend like 15 plus thousand dollars on some data, they're probably going to know what to do with it. And they've probably done that kind of stuff in the past. We said we we're moving on, damn it. So the, the point was Amazon somehow snuck up and had a hardware event that was a bit of a surprise. There were like some leaks, but yeah, caught most people off guard. And what I love about their approach to hardware is it's just a total shotgun blast. Yeah. They don't, it's like there's a spectrum of, we care a lot and, and try not to release junk. That's Apple on that one end. <laughs> That's why I put the word try in there. And then somewhere, and then further along down, you've got Google. It's like, yeah, they, they care a lot. And then on the other end, you've probably got like <laughs> Xiaomi, <laughs> Xia, Xiaomi and, and, and Amazon. Where Amazon's like, we're just trying junk. We're just gonna put a screen on this one. This one's gonna have a big subwoofer on it. They released like 10 different new things. And it's what I think is cool is that they're what the heck? they're like guinea pigs, they, <laughs> like because then a year later Google will release like a copycat version of one of these. Yeah. So let's just go through some of the stuff. It starts off pretty tame. You start off with some Echo Dots, which is just like a really small Echo. No, Echo Dots old though. They, well, there's a couple things that they upgraded. It looks like yeah, maybe upgraded versions or newer versions. But then immediately you get into like what the heck. The Echo Auto. Echo Auto, an in-car accessory that allows you to in integrate Alexa into your car. So here's the weird thing. You can plug it in two different ways. You can plug it in with a 3.5 millimeter aux jack or by connecting over a smartphone's existing Bluetooth setup to the car. But you cannot just directly weird. Bluetooth the device to the car. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, apparently, there's a slight catch. It's not ready and it's only available by invitation. Well, the, yeah, the, these uh, the different items on this list have kind of a staggered rollout. Some things you can pre-order right now. Some things you can't even pre-order yeah. yet. This this auto one, it gets powered by a cigarette lighter, like one of those cigarette lighter ad yeah. adapters that goes into U like a mini USB. So you've got that one cord for sure. And then then you also have to either do the Bluetooth through a phone. But if you don't do that, you've got the 3.5 millimeter jack. So then that's possibly two cords coming out of this thing and into your car. But if it's, okay, if it's, how does it bridge onto the Bluetooth through your phone? Because Bluetooth can only connect to one thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. And then it's ju it's just Alexa capability in the car. Like it's, maybe paying it, 50 bucks because you really can't not talk to Alexa for like. You're just driving to work. You know what? I need more toilet paper. Now, <laughs> like I, this second. All my best thinking is done in the car. Oh, All right, let's man. not dwell. We've got like nine things to go through. Amazon Echo Sub. If you've got a lot of different Echo devices in your house and you have them hooked up in like a multi-room speaker array, well, it's time you had a six-inch 100-watt subwoofer to go with those. So this is a sub you got. Sorry, hold on. There's a super chat thing, which, uh, sorry, guys, I'm not going to read all these. Hold the phone. What's the difference between Tech Linked and Tech Quickie? They seem the same. Why have both? Have you even watched oh! them? <laughs> Thank you for your $5 donation. 
One has an orange and blue background. Yeah. The other has a white background. It's so different. Like, seriously, guys. One is a daily news show where they look at the news of that day and report on it in a quick fashion. That's tech linked. Yeah. And then one is a video of explainers. These videos tend to be more evergreen in that uh, you might look up the definition of HDMI today or three years from now. And that content, it's kind of like an encyclopedia of, of tech definitions. The idea behind that's Tech Quickie, tech quickie originally was um, Linus and I were talking about how like our mom or a friend or someone might be in a store or be shopping for something and see a name of something like HDMI or core I seven and be like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what value this brings to me. And we wanted to make more or less a repository of information on those types of things. That's why a lot of the original videos were as basic as what is HDMI. Um, and it's gotten into a little bit more, higher level topics over time because you run out of those things pretty quick. Uh, but it's it's explainers. It's If you ever ask yourself kind of a tech question of like, how does this work? Why or can't what I is use, that? Why can't I use my uh, phone when I'm on the airplane? Yeah, that kind of stuff. As long as it's in the tech realm. Then tech wiki might have it. And then tech linked is daily news. They're like really, really wildly different. Thank you for your super chat though. And Anyways. please subscribe to everything. Yeah. Let's continue. So we have the Echo Sub. It's 130 bucks for one. That's quite a lot. That's a lot. That's a yeah. lot. And it's a six inch sub. It's like, it's going to be this big. Yeah. That's a lot. And you have to pair it with other Echo things. So I don't know. Does that mean you can talk to it? Like, does it have a microphone I array? Think so. I think so. And all that. Yeah. And if it talks back, is it just like, hello, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right away, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> they should have like the only voice that can speak through it should be like morgan freeman or like uh earl jones yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i am the subwoofer <laughs> there's other sound companion things because there's the echo link app the echo sub and the echo input the echo link amp that thing is amp, sweet sorry, actually sorry, sorry, sorry. if i'm in the google ecosystem and uh, mostly because the the amazon stuff comes to Canada way later and and whatever. Yeah. Um, That's probably the one I'd want. I would want that. Because you can, as far as I uh, can assume, is you can still plug in all your own speakers and stuff. That's right. So yeah. for me, I have really old, like from the 90s, Klipsch Tower probably speakers. Probably great. Yeah, they're wicked. Yeah. And I wanted to have a cool looking amp for them to go in because I had a JVC mm. one that I got for Christmas as a kid and it had lots of buttons on it and it had like what a... What is going on? Whose hair is this? I, don't know. <laughs> I wanted a more stylish amp for for my, um, you know, the shelf in the living room that's all hip looking. Yeah. But there's just too many knobs and shit, and it doesn't it doesn't look nice. So then I ended up having to go to like I, I went online. I was like, can I get like a, you know, the old look, the vintage look where they were just yes. they were just aluminum, just yeah. polished, and there's just one nice big knob, and that's about it. Who doesn't want that? And so I ended up having to go to a vintage store, like refurbish stuff in order to get one because there's just no, I couldn't find any new stuff that, that had that kind of aesthetic. This kind of does. It's, kind of. It's black. It's not silver, but it's black and it's really clean. And the LEDs you, that it does have are just white. Yeah. And you it's, can, a, it's kind of it's like the, the only weird thing about it is that it is just one single knob. A big knob. Because um, usually they would be like wider and more boxy. This one has some curves to it and it's just the knob instead of all the other inputs and buttons. But it's still metal. Like, but it but it, it does, it's yeah. It's clean looking. It's not a huge You can department. plug your old speakers into it and you've got basically this smart speaker setup. You've got all the Alexa abilities on your awesome older speakers. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. And then they've got this. What is the input? The in, okay, so the input is basically an Echo Dot like with no one. speaker. So the Echo okay. Dot is, is like the Google Home Mini. It's really small. It's like the size of a puck. It's got a speaker that sucks. You can talk to it. It answers you. It's 50 bucks. This new one is $15 cheaper. Get rid of the speaker. You've just got this microphone puck that you plug into an existing speaker and piggyback off of that, which is cool. What I actually Whoa. really want. So the this thing is the Echo Link or the Echo Link amp. It's two versions which are physically the same thing. I'm guessing one of them is just not actually an amplifier and the other one is, I'm assuming. 
because the Echo Link amp is the same thing as the Echo Link, but with a 60 watt stereo amplifier inside. So the other one doesn't have that. And even when it doesn't have the amplifier, it's 200 bucks. And with the amp, it's three? 300 bucks. Yeah. Some of these are, Ooh. man, some of these devices are serious investments, like the Google Home Max. Jeez. Isn't that like an Xbox? Yeah. Holy crap. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but the Google Home Max is like 500 bucks. Wow. 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 It's, it's just so expensive. Like you can get a good speaker. Like the Google Home Max is a good speaker, but you can get some good speakers for that. It's like, it's, it's crazy. And the, the input is 35. Like where is this Delta? It's so weird. <laughs> what I really want is something even more slimmed down than the input. I want just a microphone. <laughs> Seriously, I'm in my house and in my house, the Google Home can hear me anywhere. If it's in the middle of the night, I can be in my bed and whisper. Hey. And it'll be <laughs> it, it, it can, but if I'm a foot away from it with music on, hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to just have like the smallest possible form factor, just a little microphone that I can just, I can just be like Nixon and just hide them around my house. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, um, Amazon Fire TV Recast, a DVR box that can store TV shows and movies for viewing at home or on the go, will release on November 14th and start at 230 bucks. Wow. Why are they all so expensive? I can't even see that in here, by the way. I don't think that's in this article, but I believe it. That's crazy. Some of these have funny names too. Um, Ring stick up camera. Uh, <laughs> they bought Ring. Ring is a home security company oh, that does okay. like those yeah, yeah, yeah. your doorbell that goes to your phone, and you can. This is a security camera, so you can you can look through it. You can talk to people through it. You can make a siren noise if you want all through your phone. And 180 bucks for one of those cameras. The Ring stick up camera set to release on October 18th. Lets you see, hear, and speak to people from your tablet, phone, PC. Here's another one with a funny name. Amazon Smart Plug. That's me. <laughs> Adds voice control to anything plugged in and will cost 25 bucks when released on October 11th. So it's, you plug it into your wall, you plug another thing into it, uh, like a dumb thing. Yeah. Like a lamp that doesn't have a Philips Hue in it. Yeah, yeah. And then you can just turn it off. And you can do schedules too. So you can hook up a bunch of crap like that into it and then say, after six o'clock, turn off. Or you can be it be at work and think oh i left that on so i'm going to shut it off remotely they released an analog wall clock with echo so yeah so what that th <laughs> i know i they're this is what i like about them they're just like why not this is the most shotgun approach i've ever it's seen. the best it's 30 bucks and it basically is a visualization tool for the timers that you set yeah so one of the most useful things on any of these assistants is hey set a timer for 30 minutes yeah and what i usually do That's is i say i say hey how much time left on the timer and it'll be oh. 18 minutes left with this you don't need to ask again you can just glance up and the clock is like look at it's like a countdown analog wall clock that you'd now have again like those clocks at the swimming pool that have like all the different yeah, arrows yeah, yeah, until yeah. your lap time yeah it just gives you a, a a visual countdown i guess it's a smart looking smart clock would you buy a smart clock yeah. <laughs> he said no. I didn't think so. I wouldn't buy a microwave with Alexa either. Okay. Speaking of which. The microwave. The Alexa-enabled microwave is actually the best thing, I think. Sell me on it, James. Okay. Well. Sell me on it, salesman, James. They kind of botched some of the coolest things about it. So Amazon's Amazon Basics microwave with Alexa voice functionality will cost <laughs> 60 bucks when released on November 14th. So originally I thought this is kind of cool because a lot of people want to add these assistants to their kitchen but it always takes up more space like you're gonna have like one of these tablets on your kitchen countertop and i don't have well, space what, for that i'm gonna interrupt you again wired has been trying to link to these things the whole way through i'm pretty sure because they're trying to get affiliate revenue but they linked to the microwave but it's not on amazon yet so the you click on the microwave and it tries to like their automatic link identifier thing tries to bring us to dot ca and it just lists like some random black and decker microwave <laughs> which has like three stars out of five like people <laughs> even like that much it also costs 772 dollars because uh, there's only one used one for uh, sale and the pricing's just broken so i was like oh okay i'll just you know what their automatic link thingy just derped us i'm gonna switch that to dot com did that nope <laughs> 
<laughs> just a whole bunch more random microwaves. I thought this was all like news links, but no, no, it's just affiliate links. Okay, yes. sounds good. Thanks, guys. So you want an assistant in your kitchen. You <sighs> usually have to add some extra device on your counter space. That sucks. So no, I thought, now you can just buy a whole new microwave. It's in, your, it's in your microwave. That's already taken up space. Sweet. But it turns out it's not actually completely built into the microwave. The microwave just pairs with, <laughs> with an Echo. So it doesn't have mic microphones on the microwave. <laughs> so you still have to have your Echo device within earshot or something like that. But it... Okay, I Nick? I was just going to say, with the amount of av avocado toast that millennials are buying, <laughs> all of our places are so small that one Alexa just fits your whole home anyway. Yeah, it does. Like, I'm not Shaquille O'Neal with 17 bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. Like, the reason I, my Google Home can hear me even if I'm in bed, it ends in the living room, because my room doesn't even have a door. <laughs> my house is one room. Also, like, just use your phone. With Google Assistant. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But the reason I think this actually kind of works on a microwave is for a few different reasons. Number one, you don't want to learn how to do stuff on a microwave. I want to dash order popcorn. <laughs> you don't want to learn. Have you seen a microwave and you're like, okay, how do I, how do you set a timer on this thing? I don't think that's how, ever happened. How do you, they're confusing. Number, man. number, number, giant green start button. That's for the basic stuff. I just hit start. And hope that it works. What do you do in a microwave more advanced than that? Like defrosting a fish, and like there's tons of different advanced crap that no one uses, be and partly because you just don't want to invest that much time into learning how to use it. Instead, you're just like, yeah, put it in for 30 seconds, I'll check it. But also partially because, like, if you use the popcorn setting, it burns your popcorn. So just learn how much time it takes <laughs> to cook your popcorn. <laughs> so this has presets, so you can put something in, and the example they have is. Hey assistant, heat up my hey, heat up one, one cup of co heat one cup of coffee, and it knows. Jeeves, heat my coffee, please. It knows what the item is. See, if it was an oven instead of a microwave, uh, instead of a microwave, you could at least be like chilling on the couch, and be like preheat to four hundred degrees, Alexa. Heck yeah. Because you didn't want to get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a micro. What are you gonna do? Preheat your microwave? Dude, I'd be you way do more down with an with an oven based version of yeah. this. Even even if you're not on the couch, even if you're just in the meal prep stage, if you're chopping something up and you're like, oh you crap. Get chicken all over your hands. Switch to broil. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I'm sure it's coming. This is just uh this is number one. Do it up, Amazon. Get her done. Oh yeah. That's why I'm here. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Good it's call. time for our favorite sponsors. Sponsors! <laughs> Oh boy. Sponsor team, assemble. Assemble. Half of you are gone because of the. Anyways. Um, wait. Synergy. Everyone can see this. That doesn't actually matter, but we're going to come back to us. It's us now. Uh, let's do, yeah. Let's That's do not my Twitter first. handle. They're first on the... There we go. <laughs> uh, Synergy, if you're an IT professional or a power user. I'm neither. Uh, you're not a power user? You wouldn't classify yourself a power user? It's a spectrum. Okay. <laughs> Depends fair. who you're talking it's to. It's true, yeah. Um, if you're an IT professional or power user or just person who has two computers or like a computer and a laptop, which is that's still two computers, but anyways, uh, at the same time that run different operating systems or the same one, I don't know why this is necessarily worded the way that it is, uh, you can connect them together and share a mouse and keyboard between the two. My favorite use case for this personally uh, is actually one that I've never done. I've done the more hardcore one, but whatever. Uh, is when you, if you work with a laptop at work that you bring home, quite a few people do this these days. A lot of workplaces just have docking stations and you just bring your own laptop in. You can bring it home, put it on some type of like laptop arm or dock or something like that, and Synergy will automatically detect that it's there and share your desktop's mouse and keyboard to that laptop. So if there's stuff you were working on, you want to keep working on it, or there was something you saw during the day or whatever, 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 you could drag it from computer to computer because it has that, that functionality to just drag and drop from one desktop to the other. Um, and it shares your keyboard and mouse between the two. It's, it's, it's super, super cool. I went off script there. A That's little bit. dope though. It's, it's very cool. I've always yeah. really liked this. For me, I had, um, I had two computers set up. I don't even remember why. Uh, but if you go back and watch the original mineral oil computer video back when I was filming and editing videos, not in front of the camera. Um, I'm filming Linus doing like a room walkthrough of my room, showing off my mineral oil computer. And there's two computers, but there's two keyboards and two mice. 
Yeah, that's, and it was super late. That's Bush League, dude. Yeah. No. Nope. And I had like different monitors set up for the different computers, and it was it was a nightmare. Anyways, uh, you can you can check out Synergy uh, and get signed up there at this crazy link that's below us, or if you're watching the VOD in the description down below. Uh, next up, we've got Madrinas with this six pack of cold ones. Um, Madrinas coffee is our coffee cold. for fuel. Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit. Um, they have a big cans of cold brew coffee with a flavor for anyone. They have a whole bunch of different kind of stuff here. I think this even has cafe caramel, cafe vanilla, cafe mocha, cold brew black, uh, dark, and cappuccino, it looks like. Two times dark roast. Two times dark roast. Two X. Uh, and they're stackable. Oh, my. Is that your own mug? Physics. No, that's Madrina's. Oh, no. I thought, but like, do you use this one? Yes. All right. It's my on, daily driver. On point. Uh, from sweet and creamy flavors like mocha. Okay, we're going through this again. Like sweet and creamy flavors like mocha or caramel to bold and roasty flavors like cold brew black and dark roast. Madrina's coffees are delicious specialty grade blends of cold brewed coffee brought to you in a convenient, ready to drink 16 ounce can. We carry that around. Yeah. Uh, from now until September 28th, you can get 50% off. That's one of my really? favorite things about the Holy Madrina sh- spots. Is they're always like Gee. aggressive with their deals. You can get 50% off your Madrina's coffee order with discount code Linus. And the first 50 people to use code Linus will get a free bag of micro roast uh, for international orders or a free six pack of cold brew sampler like this where it has six different kinds of cold brew um, for US and Canadian orders. So you get 50% off. And you get either a bag of micro roast, roast or a six pack of cold brew. I want the six pack. Yeah, well, you would get that because you're in Canada. That's what I'd get. So that would work. Nice. Uh, all details are at madrinascoffee.com slash Linus. Uh, if you have any questions about the coffee or the promo, uh, Shlomo Madrinas is in chat right now. So you can uh, at them and they will respond with whatever answers to whatever questions you may or may not have. Uh, Squarespace, standard sponsor, been around for freaking ever. You can complete, you can create beautiful websites with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. They basically do everything for you. You basically just tell it how you want it to look. Uh, Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer uh, support via live chat and email because who wants to call people these days anyways? Uh, you can also attend a live webinar. You want pizza? No, I don't personally. Thanks, though, Ed. Uh, You can also attend a live webinar or check out their help guides. Uh, You can now transfer your third-party domains to Squarespace's domain registrar thingy. Uh, So instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you can manage all of your domain and billing settings with Squarespace. So you can really, like, really simplify the whole experience. Uh, It's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace also offers a service for you to manage products, orders, and inventory all through their website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use offer code WAN, W-A-N, to get 10% off your first purchase. Um, And we'll have a link to that in the description below if you are watching the VOD, or you can just go to this link if you're watching right now. So That's it. I'm having a party for my birthday on Saturday. Luke, you can come. Okay. But Taryn's asking me some details about it. Okay. I gave him my buzzer number so he can buzz up. And he's like, well, where does the buzzer go? Does it go to a phone? And I said, it goes to my wife's phone. And he says, cell phone? And then I say, no, my wife's landline. We have separate landlines. <laughs> of course her cell phone, Taryn. If you're watching this, JK. Why does he care? <laughs> Does it make a difference? <laughs> now he's asking if her and I live in the same house. <laughs> we're married. <laughs> and we're under 80. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So I'll see you guys all there. Oh, everyone. Since my data got leaked. I was just so. going to say, everyone's yeah. going to know now. So uh, Go buy the NCAX uh, data. Meet me at my place. Yeah. It's only a $15,000 for an invite. Call me up. Anyways, uh, Google's Chinese search engine links searches to phone numbers? Possibly, allegedly. Maybe. Google is taking a second crack at offering its search engine in China. Google pulled out of mainland China in 2010, so it's been a little while now, um, after discovering a phishing attack targeting human rights activists. This time, to comply with the Chinese government's censorship requirements, Google is reportedly, reportedly, 
important operative word right there, uh, building a prototype system that would tie Chinese users' Google searches to their personal phone numbers. Google hasn't, which they probably all are already kind of do, so they would just be giving that information to China. Um, this time, uh, whoops, Google hasn't confirmed the existence of this project at all, also extremely important uh, line right there. It's previously said that it's only doing exploratory work on a search service in China and that it's not close to launching a search product in the country very specifically. Around 1,400 Google employees have allegedly signed a letter demanding more information about the project, ugh, which reportedly runs in partnership with a Chinese company. Apparently five employees have left because of the project. I have some questions about this. Yeah. First question, how many people are going to use this given that there's huge search incumbents there, notably Baidu, Who's going to use Google when you've got to like sign up and give like, it's not frictionless like it is here. You're not going to be able to go to yeah. new tab, Google, search for what you want. You're going to have to sign up. Do you have and to sign up that's for when Baidu? You input your, that's when you're going to input your phone number. But everyone already did sign up for Baidu. So right. I don't know how much of a footprint they're going to get there. Next question. <laughs> um, this is a more of a statement. I think that your phone number is tied to like your official government ID there. Yeah. So that's why this for your, I'm gonna butcher this. I don't remember what it's called, but you're like citizen standing, ah, um, which is like a really deep topic. That's like a new thing, though, right? New ish. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's its own thing. Yeah, that's very much its own conversation, and I'm not well versed enough in that at all. You know what I am well versed in? The first uncensored <laughs> adult Steam game, which got banned in 28 countries after only coming out. I'm so surprised. On September 14th. But that was fast. You know what? It's still available in the U.S., Canada, and U.K., and that's a lot of the people listening right now. It is. And now, since it's banned, we all get to talk about it and I see guess. what all the fuss is about. And their so sales get to go. We've we've been. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was the whole goal. Uh, we've been talking about this developing Steam conversation for quite a while now. I think this is the third or fourth time it's come into the show where Steam banned a game and then they became the whole topic of like, well, should they actually be the gatekeepers to what games get to be on the platform? Um, because at a certain point, you kind of stop... Like, when you, when you own so much of a space, people stop seeing you as a private company and start seeing you as like... Like an essential service, almost. Yeah, yeah. and it's not actually what happens, but people start observing your company as that totally it's like when target said that they weren't gonna have grand theft auto on their shelves anymore it's like yeah they, they were they thought that was some kind of breach of human rights or something it's like if i open james pizza shop and i want to serve only, only ham and pineapple pizza. yeah i'm allowed to do that you it's my shop do but that. you start to get kind of entitled and be like no walmart has to have everything a completely comprehensive selection and if it doesn't then they're just censoring and and there's some validity there because uh, consumers could just go somewhere else, right? So they you start being seen as an essential service, and then you kind of have to act that way or else people will just bail. Or you don't and then hope that you make it anyways. But Steam's approach was that we'll just add filters and you can just not see what you don't want to see. And then apparently countries are just going to ban games anyways. So it doesn't really matter yeah. in the end. So the official statement uh, from Steam, I believe, is like they do not endorse pornography or yeah. erotica in games. The game's still on the store. Yeah. But you're not going to see it unless you specifically st tell Steam that you want to see those things. Yeah. And so I'm like, 13, and I'm on Steam, and I'm just checking that box. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure most people are. Uh, I am definitely 28 years old. Yeah, it's like um, those Flash games when, when you're a kid. The, <laughs> the internet was new. You're like, are you at least 18? Sure. It's like, what year were you born? Scroll down to the 50s. That's definitely yeah. old enough. Dude, I used to troll and just make myself like a thousand years old. Because sometimes they would just in, in they just pull from like a database of years, right? So they it's wouldn't like, even check. Input the year, you're like sixteen seventy six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in the fifteen hundreds. The game Negligé, Love Stories yeah. is the first totally uncensored wow. adult game on Steam. It's been banned in all sorts of like usual suspect kind of countries, like Saudi Arabia. And yeah, that's not surprising. 
Game has been banned South in a number Africa. of countries for having uncensored naked anime girls. Damn cartoon boobies. Yep. They might release future games with a censored edition as the main release with a free or cheap mature content filter. Uh, mature content release. I don't know what to call that. The opposite of filter. Mm. Uncensored. Unveiling. Yeah. The, the unveiling DLC. Yeah. There you go. You just the RTX on. Yeah. <laughs> Way on. I think they're a little bit worried. <laughs> that... RTX off. RTX on. RTX super on. <laughs> the switch is broken. <laughs> Just holding the lever. Yeah. Uh, there's a quote here. If they find or targeted Steam as per our agreement with Steam, we, uh, this is Darker Studios, we would be liable for all the costs and damages to Steam, which would end our company. And since we are a small indie developer and do not have the resources for such costs while making games, that would be a bad thing. And, then, and that's that's there. why they're they're um, considering in the future just kind of making it safe by default and then just charging you a bit more, having you to opt in. Yeah. to uh, get in the dirty version. Speaking of things getting banned in different countries, Twitch has been blocked in China. You are trying to block me. <laughs> Twitch has received an uptick uh, in Chinese viewership over the last few months as audiences flocked to watch esports matches being played um, at the Asian Games in Jakarta, an event not broadcasted on state-run media in China. Last month, Twitch hit the number three spot among free apps in China. Downloads for the app of the week of August 27th rose 23 times higher than the previous week. Uh, China performed well during the event and brought back two gold medals. But now, Twitch has been blocked in China with no official statement being released by Chinese authorities because they probably really don't care. Uh, the steady shutdown of access to Twitch was logged via social media in, chi uh, in China. Viewers in many provinces reported that the site was suddenly unavailable in their region while it was still up elsewhere. By the end of the week, Twitch had been completely blocked. Yeah, so the way this works, I think, is that you kind of... Obviously, China, they like to control the activity that happens online. So if, if suddenly there's a lot of activity on a website... Um, that kind of gets their attention. And so, for example, streaming is really popular in China, but they've got strict rules. Some of them are really weird. Like you are not allowed to stream yourself eating a banana because pornography is illegal in China. There became a trend of people just doing non-pornographic erotic things like eating bananas in a sexual manner while streaming. And so <laughs> then they just said, okay, eating a banana on a stream is illegal. So they have rules like this, and when uh, suddenly a large portion of the Chinese population- What about like a voluptuous grapefruit? I'm sure you could push it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a banana, it's a plantain. <laughs> it's girthier. This one's an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one you're not allowed to wear. Oh, something you're not allowed to wear, like, I forget, but it's, it's silly. Um, so that, then the, you get a foreign website that gets a lot of traction. There's a lot of people watching streams, and they have no control of what happens on those streams. Uh, the population could be watching streamers who are talking about uh, topics that are not friendly to the party, and that's no good. So they just shut it down. And if they think it's a compelling offering that the people of China should have in their lives, then they'll just get a Chinese cop, uh, yeah. company to make a, a carbon copy of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they keep the money in China. Someone in chat is like, putting me on blast because i'm not using this opportunity to rep pia <laughs> <laughs> vpn that's gonna cost you pia They're helpful tnx you week caught, you might be in trouble in china um there's a bunch more topics but we could also be sort of done yeah is there any way you want to talk about because there's a lot of topics so is there any you specifically well, want to jump here to? here's one that's 10 seconds long one plus sure. is making tvs that's all we know we don't know when <laughs> we know how much they cost we can be reasonably sure they're not going to actually make panels like LG yeah. or or um, Samsung or what's the big Chinese one that no one knows but is actually third. Oh, um, it starts with a T. TLC. Is it? No, TCL. TCL. There we go. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to do that. They're like, just going to. They're going to be a <laughs> yeah. Tender <laughs> loving China. They're, <laughs> they're just going to buy a panel from someone else and then put a casing on it and make their own on-screen display and and somehow integrate it with their phones. I'm sure, but that's yeah. about all we know. Yeah. But that's cool. They make headphones good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about this at all, but it seems cool. Europe and Washington State bands together to tackle the loot box problem, and it's a long topic. 
It's cool though because it just puts more pressure. Hopefully, absolutely, there'll be no more loot boxes at all. But That'd that's be great. dumb. <laughs> that they'll they'll make it freemium somehow. They'll find a way. <sighs> Money will find a way. I hate loot boxes. See you at my, my birthday. Biggest, my, <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Honestly, my my one of my biggest problems with loot boxes is, is I think something that isn't being fought for very much. I hate that cosmetic items are in it, and a lot of people say that it's fine. But there's a lot of paid games that have cosmetic items and loot boxes, and I think that is horrendous. The old League of Legends model, especially then, it wasn't even a loot box. Uh, you just buy it. You buy the one you want, which is <laughs> why is that so hard? <laughs> you just get the thing you want. Um, but with loot boxes, putting cosmetic items in it, it removes it. Re in my opinion, it removes features from the game, and I think that's something that people aren't really paying attention to. Like if you look at Destiny. Destiny, when it first came out, I've heard the new expansion is good, whatever, I don't care, I'm done with that game. But when Destiny first came out, there was all this stuff to do, but it was extremely not rewarding. And you would hit like a cap really, really quickly. And then the main things left to do in the game, in a lot of games, once you hit the end, is to like make your character look really cool. And there was a lot of ways to pay for that. <laughs> but there's so many systems in the game where it would have been really easy and absolutely would have happened like 10 years ago if there was no loot boxes they would have had maybe not all the cosmetic items but a lot of the cosmetic items that were there would be unlockable through doing something in the game ah. and you paid full price for this game so having like additional challenges like oh beating the raid in under a certain amount of time or beating the raid with no deaths or or it's doing not whatever new else. content the raid was already there yeah it's just new incentive to play it a different way yeah and that's that's huge for me personally i love weird challenge modes i'll often like play a game on a not very high difficulty but then make it so that like oh i'm, I'm playing a shooter game but i'm you I nerf do, yourself i don't allow myself to use guns yeah, i have yeah. to use like uh, uh like like just a knife yeah i did that in splinter cell in the third yeah. one chaos theory yeah i was only allowed to uh, stun the lights out like emp them no bullets <laughs> at all i missed out on all the shotguns and snipers and all the cool things in that game yeah but it makes it really it a awesome. cool experience. Yeah. And that's something you can do. And the game can also incentivize those types of situations. And they often games often do with cosmetic items or unlocks of some sort. Like if you remember uh, Smash back in the day, to the unlock all one. the characters, you had to do some stuff. What did you have to do? I don't even remember, but you had to do some stuff. I, f I feel like it, it required an all-nighter. It's like you had to do something with every character or something crazy thing like that like it was it was kind of not and a lot of games used to have those types of systems and those were really fun and now most of those things i'm not saying the new smash doesn't have this one i don't even know if the last smash had that type of a system i'm not trying to throw smash under the bus i just remember that was a very legendary one of being able to unlock the characters fairly core to the game um a lot of games used to have systems where if you did something at an advanced level or in a specific way you would unlock something and most of those systems have been removed in order to make it so you pay for those things. Yeah, that's weak. That is, I hate that so much. We need a new I love console. those things. A new console. Yeah, yeah. Hey, are there any more Super Chats? Uh, I don't know how to check. Like 100%. Do you I have, have to no just idea. scroll up or something? Like, oh, wait. Are they in line? Here they are. Oh. I think. Hello? Hi, boys. Notice, Luke is the best at responding to Super Chat. <laughs> <laughs> two, two bucks. Hi, boys. Just want to say... You're Say you're beautiful people. people. My beautiful people, what? Linus is not there. Please raise mic volume. Does this thing work? September 7th isn't in the playlist, by the way. Okay. Uh, thanks, Gabriel. How many giga rays does Alexa support? LOL. Uh, DLSS. Does the NCIX data breach affect anybody? In a real first, first world, world country. country. Okay, that person must be from England because... Is <laughs> that a shot at Canada and the U.S.? No, I'm I'm saying this from someone from Ca from the U.S. making a shot at Canada, but I think Canada's more first world than the U.S. But there's Get at me, haters! But there's NCX U.S. The U.S. database is in there. On Privacy Flight, there's people with U.S. addresses because the U.S. database leaked. We're all wrecked together. Yeah. Unity. Unity! <laughs> I gotta get my carpool home. Ubuntu. <laughs> you uh, just get, get bunted. <laughs> Turn off slow mode. It's what lines. I don't even know how to do that. Luke, my girlfriend is in love with you. What do I do? Wow. Um, Kill Luke and uh, take his 
is loot. Is <laughs> unlock some, unlock some new. He's <laughs> <laughs> just gonna be sitting on the ground. <laughs> Equip his items. Unlock new cosmetic. Plus three beard of wisdom. <laughs> Minus two knees. <laughs> When will NCX Tech Tips be doing a collaboration with Linus Tech Tips? Either that's a joke or you're really behind the times. Uh, Google Home or Alexa Press preference, go. Google Home, but I haven't really played with Alexa too much, but it seems so geared towards ordering stuff on Amazon that I don't care. Exact same story for me. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. There's also, this shirt's for sale. There's a lot of these. Yeah. Are you RTX on enough to sport this thing and, and be swimming in the affections of the people you love? No. You can buy it. Get it. Get at it. It actually fits pretty good. I think this looks great on me. Mm. It does it does Boom. fit well. Mm. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell All right yeah. guys. I think I think that's it for the show. Thank you for tuning in. Uh sorry it was like half an hour late because we were streaming to the wrong platform, so rip. Um, rip. And I'll see you next time.